Hi everyone, Icon here from Attack Magazine. In this video, we're gonna break down and recreate a drop by one of our favorite current DJ producers, Sammy Virgie. The drop is from his track Never Let You Go from 2018, and we recently rediscovered our love for this tune after seeing the effect it has on the crowd in Sammy's DJ Mag HQ performance from last year. The track starts around the 39th minute mark in that set, and it's not hard to see and hear just how much of an anthem the FM bassline is. There are also lots of great production lessons to be taken from the sounds used and even the music theory leading up to the drop. We'll be taking a look at all of this while using Live12's new Meld Synth to recreate many of the sounds, starting with the bass. Here's what we'll be creating. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, we really appreciate the support. Start with the main drop section and we have a couple of backing tracks ready to go to program the bass over. The first is a straight UK garage style drum loop that we've EQ'd a bit to emphasize the highs more. Next is a layered vocal chop melody that'll create a great rhythmic and melodic contrast to the FM bass line. We're not really going to go into the production of the vocal chops from the original track because it's very intricate and would probably require a whole other video on vocals processing. For now we've made do by using one low vocal sample and one high one. The vocals are only playing a two note riff with the DNG notes and we're using the portamento glide style in Ableton Simpler to add a pitch bending effect. We've also added a bit of chorus to the group and also sidechained the vocal chops to the kick. Even playing with just the drums, the vocal rhythm adds so much groove. To start building the bass, let's load up an instance of Meld on an empty MIDI channel. We'll mute oscillator A and set oscillator B to harmonic FM. We'll also change the voicing to mono, activate Mel's internal limiter, and bring the overall volume to zero. With the MIDI notes playing, you can hear everything's very subby and almost inaudible. However, when we increase the FM ratio parameter and the amount, we start to get the harmonic textures we're looking for. The ratio starts to sound really good from 60 onward, and then it's all about finding a good setting for the amount. We'll set the ratio to 100 and leave the amount at around 12. The wobbly characteristic of the bass is going to come from the LFO affecting both the volume and the filter frequency. First we'll head to the oscillator B matrix and ensure the LFO is affecting both of these parameters. We'll have it fully affect the volume at 100% and 55 will be good enough for the filter. If we lower the filter cutoff, we'll start to hear the modulation. We'll leave it a little bit above 40 Hz. Now for the LFO settings. We'll change the rate to note values and set it to quarter notes. We'll set the LFO pattern to ramp and fine tune it with the shape and slope controls. Adding some drive or a lot of drive is never a bad idea, so we'll increase this all the way to 47%. We've also been using Send A to send a bit of the signal to Live's default reverb return channel. 
To round the sound off, we'll just add some EQ to cut the highs. A compressor to sidechain the bass to the kick. And the chorus ensemble audio effect at around 25% wet to add a bit of width. If you want to get creative with automation, we definitely recommend playing with the oscillator parameters, the LFO slope, filter cutoff, or the EQ high pass. Now let's shift our attention to the buildup. We're gonna again use Meld to program the pad and white noise riser, but there are some elements that we've pre-prepared. First we have our drum loop from before, but in this section its volume is lower and it has another EQ cutting the lows. We've programmed a snare roll using one single snare sample, Just at the end, we've also consolidated a group of these snares and added a Ableton Groove preset to give it some swing. We also have the vocal chop instruments from before playing a bit of a busier melody. For the build up, we've also layered this melody with Meld Saw style lead preset. We also have the CDJ scratch sample, which allows us to abruptly end all of the other elements seamlessly. Other than that, there's the vocal phrase that creates some tension for the drop. In my head. In my head. In the original track, the vocal production is so good that it ties directly into the vocal chop melody of the drop, but as mentioned before, we chose not to focus too much on vocal production in this video. Let's program the modulating pad. It's not going to end up very similar to the original track, but our aim is that it creates a similar effect. We'll create an empty MIDI channel and load up another instance of Meld. For notes, we have the original progression from Never Let You Go that uses C major and G major chords. This is already a great technique because he's using happy major chords that completely contrast the almost dissonant bass line that comes in at the drop. In Meld, we'll mute oscillator A and set oscillator B to swarm saw. This is one of our favorite new oscillators with the parameters allowing for some pleasant detuning and frequency spacing, which is basically adding additional notes to chords. We'll leave space at 0 and set the motion to 54. For the amp envelope, we'll set the attack to 0, decay to around 792, sustain to minus 20 dB and release to 280 milliseconds. This will create a sustaining shape that also has a sharp stab. Now let's take a look at the filter. We'll set the type to LP Crunch for a distorted character. To achieve this, we'll increase the Q and also add Drive. We want to add even more movement to the filter, so we'll map the frequency to the modulation envelope and tweak the envelope. Long attack and decay times will ensure that there's always movement. To add even more movement, we'll map the frequency to the LFO1 effects as well. Here we can get creative with the shapes of both LFO1 and LFO1 effects to have some more unpredictable modulation. Thank you. 
Lastly, we're going to use the spread parameter to modulate the oscillator spacing, panning, and again the filter frequency. How this works is that spread is assigning a different value of these parameters for every voice when you stack the sound with either two or three more voices here. This adds a ton of width and in terms of sound design is one of the most innovative features Meld has introduced. To finalize the sound, we'll add a little bit more drive, activate the internal limiter, increase the volume, and also increase the tone a little bit to cut the lows. All that's left now is to automate the filter frequency to rise during the buildup. The last sound we're going to create is a straightforward white noise riser. You might be thinking why it's even worth looking at this, and the answer is simply because the new filtered noise oscillator makes the process so easy. We'll just program one long C5 note for the duration of the buildup. In meld, we'll mute oscillator B and increase the narrow parameter of oscillator A. This really filters the noise. We'll change Meld's filter to a high pass to cut the lows. And we'll also set the stack to 3 and increase the spread to 100% to really widen the noise. We'll now automate the frequency parameter to increase until the drop. Here's our final build and drop with all elements playing. We hope you enjoyed this video and definitely let us know if there are any other breakdowns like this you want to see in the future. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe for all of the latest content from Attack Magazine. See you next time.